Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Pro Wrestling Report on television on Time Warner Cable. Damian Nelson alongside the man they call Meathead. What is that? The Brewers are in the playoffs! First time in 26 years, I believe. <gasps> I was 10 and years Frank, old. I didn't have any hair going on here. Frank Cosentino, the cause. And uh, we've got a big week for you this week as we come here from the 540 ESPN studios. Uh, Motor City Machine Guns, a tag team from TNA Wrestling, Alex Shelley and Chris Saban. We're going to go to them in just a few minutes, actually from the Impact Zone in Orlando, Florida, with an exclusive bit of news here for the Pro Wrestling Report. But uh, before we do that, let's talk about some of the news, and obviously the big news is last night's TNA Impact. Last night's Impact featuring the debut of Mick bye bye. Foley. Mick Foley actually live in the Impact Zone. We saw a couple of weeks ago he did a bit of a uh, premiere, if you will, on the screens in the Impact Zone. This time getting in the face of Kurt Angle. Now, gentlemen, a couple of things we're seeing coming out of TNA over the last few weeks. Uh, we talked last week about Kurt Angle's interview he did with the UK Sun newspaper yeah, and how right. he pretty much slammed TNA wrestling. Well, again, now TNA taking that real storyline and uh, going and making this a personal battle between him and Jeff Jarrett. In case you don't remember, Jeff Jarrett and Kurt Angle going one-on-one -on -one at Bound for Glory October 12th from the Sears Center in Chicago, Illinois. This now a storyline in TNA, but apparently feelings are actually hard on uh, Kurt Angle for saying things such as TNA needs to focus on more of the younger talent, needs to get away from the gimmick matches and all of that. Kurt Angle being fined $25,000 by, Mick Fo by uh, Jim Cornette of TNA, at least on TV. And Mick mm. Foley announcing that he will be the special enforcer. Oh, boy. The special enforcer oh boy. for the matchup between Jarrett and Angle at... Uh, at Bound, Bound for Glory. I almost said No Mercy, which yeah. is a Sunday on pay-per-view, which Bound we gave a little preview of on 540 ESPN this past Monday night. Now, gentlemen, your thoughts on Impact last night and this... This real interesting scenario developing between Kurt Angle, TNA, Mick Foley, and It makes Jeff you Jarrett. not want to listen to Kurt Angle when he does an interview for a random paper because it makes you think that he's setting that up for the storyline. Frank? I, I totally agree. When you, when you go out and talk to a, any kind of publication, obviously that's out for the public. Mm -hmm. So in this case, if you use it as a storyline, now we don't know. I mean, if yeah, you, you, you take out the legitimacy of it, was he really telling the truth? Also, let's really think about who set the precedent for that. How many years ago on the David Letterman show with the Jerry the King Waller and Andy Kaufman? We oh didn't God, know I that. We to. didn't. We didn't know. We didn't know that that was a work for oh, how for many years? years. How for many years? years when Man on think, the Moon came out? I don't think this interview because it's not the first time Kurt Angle has lashed out against TNA. Uh, Kevin Nash did it recently as well. It's not the first time it has happened. I think that they're simply taking advantage of the situation and making a storyline. Uh, I say because it fits from perfectly a, into a from column two. It fits perfectly into the storyline. Or from column Mick one and Foley, column B. The special enforcer in this match seemingly more aligned with Jarrett than Angle. What do you expect to see at Bus for Word. Glory? Now with Mick Foley, not necessarily in a match, but certainly in a prominent role at the big pay-per-view from TNA Wrestling. Well, special enforcer. We've heard that before many times, and obviously. Everyone's going to be waiting for him at the end of the match just for him to do something. Well, but remember, Chris Jericho, a couple of months ago, special enforcer or referee for the match with uh, Shawn, Shawn Michaels, Michaels and, and didn't Batista. do a damn thing. But it was to set up this entire feud that it still got legs. And well, now it's supposed for, to end this Sunday at No Mercy. Now, support, now, 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 was, now it's for the World Heavyweight Champion. And here's the difference. Jericho being in WWE a long period of time, you can add the story. This is the first time that Mick Foley has been in TNA. So for him just to kind of show up and do nothing, fans would be in an uproar. Well, the IWC point. would be in an That's uproar. That's the internet wrestling community. The IWC would be in an uproar. And, again, we're very impatient when it comes to us as wrestling fans. Not me, I'm if, one of the most patient people in the world. I'm impatient with you right now. If we don't get what we want at that second, we think, oh, this is a waste. It's why did they bring Mick Foley? Why did they do all this? Well, like but, you had no mercy last year when Jericho did. The, di the difference being that this, that, is, a, this is a pay-per-view. So people are paying. Jericho was the guest referee at the pay per view. Well, in this situation, this is a pay per view where it's the first time mm -hmm. that he's actually going to be doing something in the ring, outside mm -hmm. the ring, whatever it is. So if you're paying extra money for that, Mick Foley better do something besides just stand around. Kind of like Damian and I, who didn't pay extra money for Jericho and Norm Mercy last year in Chicago. Should TNA have given us Mick Foley this soon? Should we have seen yes. Mick Foley in the Impact Zone this soon, leading yes. into, I believe, two weeks away? from Bound for Glory? Uh, should they have waited until actually that night to have Mick Foley actually 
premiere live in front of fans. Yes, it's it's, it's a perfect timing because you know what? It builds up. It builds up the pay per view. You get the extra buys now yeah. for the pay per view, so it makes sense. Yeah. Now make it's it perfect work. time. I think it's perfect time. Now make it work. That's that's the key. Even though uh, the perfect time would have been for this to be his first ever debut in the TNA world at all, not at a house show right. somewhere in the New York area. Right. Bound for Glory, Sunday, October 12th. There's a Fan Fest as well, Saturday, October 11th. Now, one interesting bit of news about Bound for Glory. It looks like the pay-per-view price has increased for that show to $34.95. Now, this is not... show. Exactly. This is not unusual from what is done in wrestling pay-per-view channels. WWE charges more for WrestleMania, $55. So, TNA taking a bit of a risk, I think, by raising their pay-per-view price for Bound for Glory. I'm not sure they have the audience established enough but here's, to do this. But here's what them. really should happen, and I've just gotten word of this over the last few weeks. In here? Um, places that have... Um, What's that noise? Uh, that would be What's Jericho's that noise? <laughs> That's Coming another off room! Off that off is off. another room! Phone. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, this is a perfect opportunity for places such as Fan Zones. That you know showed the pay-per-views. For, Hockey Town in Detroit. Uh, oh, love it's Hockey a great Town. bar. Um, you know your places like here in the Milwaukee area called um, um, Romines. Where we party every day, except for President's Day, Yom Kippur, and when they have the opportunity to show TNA's Bound for Glory. Now this is an opportunity that I think a lot of fans own places should take and you know invest in. Unfortunately, the people that are offering the um, TNA pay-per-views are charging the same price as WWE pay-per-views. If you're going to really want to hook somebody, be like a crack dealer. Give it away once or twice. Give it for free. Let them taste it. Uh, TNA Wrestling. Uh, speaking of TNA Wrestling, we've got now an exclusive interview with the Pro Wrestling Report with the Motor, <coughs> Motor City Machine Guns. Excuse me. Get all choked up. Last week we brought you Consequences Creed. This week we've got the Motor City Machine Guns. And meathead when we come back. We will tell the fans all over the world next week who will be appearing here on the Pro Wrestling Report television show. And then we've also got a blockbuster announcement for two big stars coming to uh, part of the Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN this upcoming Monday night right after WWE Raw. So without further ado, let's go now to the Impact Zone. I'm going to beam there as we've got the Motor City Machine Guns, Nice Saban, and Alex Schell. Want to beam. Hello ladies and gentlemen, Damian Nelson here of the Pro Wrestling Report on TV and radio with the Motor City Machine Guns, Alex Shelley and Chris Saban here in Orlando, Florida. Thank you so much for giving us a little bit of time here on the Pro Wrestling Report. Let's talk about the Motor City Machine Guns and how that came to be one of the best and most recognized tag teams in the world of professional wrestling. Okay. Uh, well, we first started teaming in uh, Zero One Max in Tokyo, Japan. Uh, they were the first company to put a schedule as a team. And actually, our first match together, we managed to win their tag team titles, which was a great honor. And we held those titles for a bit over a year before we lost them again in Tokyo, Japan. Um, from there, we did independent shows across the U.S. And finally, TNA decided to pull the trigger on the pun intended this year as well. And we saw both of you in a lot of singles competition before the Motor City Machine Guns came about. And uh, like I said, obviously one of the most exciting tag teams in the business. We get a lot of viewers, a lot of uh, listeners who call in and tell us uh, about how much they love the Motor City Machine Guns. We do a feature each week actually with the top three, if you will. You guys make it many a time. So, currently, professional wrestling. Got several organizations out there, obviously. TNA, the one you're participating in right now. What is the uh, most exciting element of this era of professional wrestling in your mind, Mr. Sabin? Uh, I think the most exciting aspect is uh, a lot of wrestling, a lot of the styles of wrestling are becoming blended. Like uh, a lot of people nowadays, especially in the X Division, uh, blend a lot of like Mexican style wrestling, a lot of Japanese style wrestling. So you get to see a little taste of everything. And I think that uh, if I was a fan, I would definitely be really excited to watch that. And even though um, I'm just a fan of watching the other X Division guys wrestle, just to you know watch what they do. And so I think like the blend of styles is just just one example of you know, why wrestling is so exciting nowadays. So, Backing up just a little bit, as I said, both of you had some singles time in TNA before coming together as the Motor City Machine Guns, and as you said, a lot leading up to that as well. But how did you first break into the professional wrestling business? How did you first make that big break? Getting into professional wrestling is much like getting into the other career. We special for that. Uh, we all started training when we were 18 in Scott Moore's camp, Can-Am Wrestling School in Ontario. And from there, 
you get out of the broken seasons and you put in like, a lot of time and effort into that. Um, sleeping in our cars, eating cans of beer, the driving. Tuna's um, very popular. Very popular and very nutritious, <laughs> and most importantly, it's cheap. Yeah. Um, driving all across the U.S. and doing small shows in front of little and little people. Um, and eventually, you climb the ranks and you're lucky enough to get by Tina. Mr. Saban. Uh, yeah, I mean, he pretty much said most of it. You know, started, as soon as I graduated high school, I knew that I wanted to get to wrestling, so I went to wrestling school right there. And from there, you know, like you said, it was just trying to work, work your way up the ladder. It was rough, you know, but, you know, we're fortunate to be in the spots where Tag teams that influenced you getting into the business, if you will, when you were growing up. The, the, there is always this argument about what is the greatest tag team of all time, and obviously the names that are mentioned, the Legion of Doom, Demolition, the Rock and Roll Express. What tag team most influenced you? Um, I didn't necessarily watch them growing up because they were a bit ahead of my time. However, I think as far as the older tag teams go, the one we try to pattern ourselves after the most often is probably the Midnight Express, which works greatly to our benefit considering that Jimmy Cornette <laughs> is involved so heavily with this company. Yeah. Uh, he's been a coach of sorts for us and managed to help us out quite a bit. How about you? Yeah, um, Jim Cornette has been you know, a really big help to us. He actually gave us a big pack of Midnight Express DVDs for us to watch and really? study. So, yeah, being able to watch those and study those, I mean, that, that helped us out a lot. And it, it helps us a lot with our own tank Yeah. There's a lot of people who question the physicality, the risk-taking, if you will, that's involved in the X Division and even across the board in TNA wrestling and professional wrestling. Do you ever really worry or do you think that uh, you're, you're potentially giving too much at times and risking your body more so than you would want to. Quite frankly, at the end of the day, we have to use our bodies as weapons. We're smaller, we're faster, we're more agile. Those are attributes. If we didn't use those, what else would we do? Yeah. Valid point. Uh, and pure excitement and energy, you know, being a fan of the business and uh, watching the team grow over the last few years. It's been amazing to watch the progression of the Motor City Machine Guns and the synergy that is there. It really hasn't been seen in the tag team wrestling world for quite a long time. So we as of course, thank you for that. TNA obviously getting its big, big come up, if you will. Going into Bound for Glory 4 in just a few weeks in Chicago, Illinois, just south of where we are emanating from on television. Bound for Glory, obviously, not a lot of matches announced yet, but what are your hopes? What do you want to be a part of in Bound for Glory? Well, I mean, if I could pick anything, I'd be pretty good in the team championship belts. I mean, I think that's the top of the mountain for any tag team that's in pro wrestling. It's you know, the very best at the championship belts. And I think for us, Chicago, it's not too far from Detroit, so it's not too far from home. So, uh, I mean, I'm not sure. I know we're going to be some part of Bound for Glory, and hopefully it's going to be something like that. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for your time. The Motor City Machine Guns, Craig, Alex Shelley, and Chris Saban here on the Pro Wrestling Report. And don't forget, Bound for Glory, October 12th, the Sears Center in Hoffman Estates, Illinois. SearsCenter.com for tickets for that event. This is Damian Nelson for the Pro Wrestling Report. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Stop it. To the Pro Wrestling Report on Time Warner Cable, on television, and all over the world at PWRShow.com. Motor City Machine Guns, thank you so much for joining us. Had a lot of interesting things to say about their career, how they got into wrestling, and their view on tag team wrestling in uh, mm -hmm. the business right now, both TNA and mm -hmm. WWE. Lots of interesting things, but it doesn't stop there, folks. The Pro Wrestling Report brings you next week, right here on TV, next week, Christy Hemme. Christy Hemme of the Rock and Rave Infection, formerly of World Wrestling Entertainment, will have some very candid things to say about I've seen her naked! Female professional wrestling specifically, and her journey that got her to TNA. Christy Hemme, next week, right here on the program. Christy Hemme is Monday so night. fine. Christy Hemme is so fine, I let her get me pregnant. Could you explain exactly how that would work? Well, it's somehow in the Birds and the Bees and Nagger and, and a bunch of other movies. Next week on the Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN, uh, we will have uh, special guests as well from TNA. Not even going to tell you who they are. Two mm. major stars. Can I give a hint? One in a major match at Bound for Can Glory. I give a hint? 
bacon cheeseburger. We'll be on the Pro Wrestling 4940 ESPN. As a matter of fact, we'll have that interview for you on television as well. Uh, coming up next week, and quite frankly, uh, the only place to get that is from the Pro Wrestling Report right Correct. here on PWRShow.com and all over the world on Time Warner Cable. Now, gentlemen, speaking of the Pro Wrestling Report, a couple of months ago we entered a fantasy draft where I whooped your ass and what? continues to do so. Well, we announced what? on this past Monday's edition of the Pro Wrestling Report Radio my next pay-per-view entitled Four Play. It's the number four and then play. Um, oh, <laughs> clever. <laughs> It's better than your hog wild. I'm and actually going to charge people to come go. in. Uh, this is four, four people in every match. Every match is a four-way dance. Every match is four superstars or eight in the case of the Tag Team Championship match. Let's tell you who is in those matches so far. First, uh, first of all, it will be a number one contender's ladder match for the light heavyweight championship. The participants in that match will be uh, Curry Man, Sanjay Dutt, Kofi Kingston and Jack Evans, number one contender, winner of that match, goes up against the light heavyweight champion at the following pay-per-view. And another number one contender's match, this one for the world championship, and it will be held within the confines of a 15-foot high steel Is it going to be those gay blue bars? Yes. We're going oh. to school. Ah. Samoa Joe versus Batista versus Santino Morella versus Sting. Santino Morella is wrestling for his out. heavyweight championship. One will walk out. No, for the number one contendership. For the heavyweight, for the heavyweight championship. championship. What's wrong with that? And go. Jealousy will get you nowhere. Tell then we go to the title years. matches. All the rest of the matches are four titles. First, for the women's championship, Gail Kim up against Awesome Kong, up against ODB, Frank's friend, and Angelina Love. <laughs> and who's the current the champion? People. Current champion is Gail Kim. Okay. Current women's champion right now. Current champion AJ oh, Styles oh, oh, will oh, defend his light heavyweight championship against three other men. Those are Petey Williams, Rey Mysterio, or Mastrio, depends on what you want to call him, and Evan Bourne. Frank, tell the world how great that match is going to be. Evan Airborne. On paper, it's not bad at all. On paper. The tag team titles are on the line as the Modi City Machine Guns, who you just saw on this very program, going up against the Team of Honor, Danielson and Strong, uh, Brian Danielson and Roger Strong, that is, uh, Mark Henry and the Great Khali, the Team of Doom, and the Rock and Rave Infection with Christy Hemme, who will be on next week. Wow. Sure. Uh, it's a four-way tag. <laughs> four-way tag. Just focus. Um, the Intercontinental Champion will be on the line as the champion CM Punk defends against Hernandez. Uh, Charlie Haas and a mystery <laughs> participant, a mystery participant in that oh, matchup oh. for the Intercontinental Championship and the world title. Oh, wait, 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 wait stop, stop one second. What? How are you going to vote on a mystery participant? It'll be announced in the polls. Okay, just make it sure. Yes. Uh, for the world title, the champion Y2J, Chris Jericho, goes up against Christian Cage, HBK, and John Morrison. Okay. Now that you bored everybody to death, why don't you wrap this thing up? Thank you so much for joining us, ladies and gentlemen, here wherever Great you talk. join us. Make sure Say you something. sign up for PWR Mobile. Pay-per-view. Make sure you sign up for PWR Mobile and make sure you check us out. Check out the PWR Forum. We're live in the chat room Monday night on ESPN Radio. That's 10 p.m. to midnight Central Standard Time right after WWE Raw. And we will be looking wrap forward to you joining up, us in the chat room or the chatmosphere, as we like to call it, for... Frank Cosentino, the cause, the most outspoken member of the Pro Wrestling Report <laughs> broadcast team, and the man they call me Dad. This is Damian Nelson inviting you to join us Monday night for a special guest from TNA Wrestling, and then next Friday, Christy Hemme, right here on PWR TV. So long, everybody.